between my eyes What do the find? Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach if you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of P90X, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. This is part of the Prosper Show e-commerce mastery series, where top sellers and experts teach you what really works to boost your e-commerce business. They have an amazing conference with some of the top Amazon sellers and industry leaders. Today, we have Alhaz Shiliwala who's an expert at foreign sourcing. He's founder of American Star Group, where they help companies with sourcing, quality control, and business tours of manufacturing. Their company helps you take an idea to a finished product by sourcing in China, India, or some of these other countries. He's developed private label brands for soccer apparel companies, developed and produced a fitness active wear and yoga wear for startups and much more. Alhaz, thanks for joining me. Uh, thanks, thanks, Jeremy, for having me on the show. You know, what's interesting when I was doing the research is I want to hear some of the crazy stories that you've seen. Um, let's start with what's some of the, the foreign sourcing nightmares you've seen or heard of? Uh, just been a bunch of uh, foreign sourcing nightmares since I started uh, in 2010. First time I went to, in China in 2010, it was uh, right around this time of the year. And before Chinese New Year, everything was going crazy there. And uh, the factory is like backed up with orders. Last Were you order. going there for a particular order of yours or why were you going there? No, I was going there for the, they had a, a trade show there. Mm. And I got a in, uh, uh, private invite from the uh, hosting party. Okay. Uh, and uh, they did, they took us to uh, factories. They did a mastermind order, uh, dinners and stuff like that. Why did you get a private invite? Uh, I think at, at the time they were trying to bring more foreign uh, uh, sub, uh, uh, buyers to China, and they, I think they and I, my practical line is in clothing, so they invited most of the clothing um, uh, buyers into China. So 2010, your company did what? Uh, we're just starting out. This so was the the procurement company. Yeah. 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 So what were you doing? Uh, we are out there looking for suppliers and uh, getting to new, 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 finding new suppliers and finding new factories out there. Yeah. Um, and so, at the time, you were you just starting the company? Yeah, Did I just you... started the company. Okay. Uh, it was fresh, uh, 2010 when we started with a different branding than we rebranded in 2015. Okay. So, how did you get your first customer for that company? The first customer was tough. It was just going through all the forums and uh, look, sending them massive emails every day. And one 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 day, I see, oh, we'd like to go ahead and process, do a process and order with you. Uh, this is the information. This is our requirement we ha we need. Just help us find it. What kind of company was it? Was it an apparel? It was in a small, a small wholesaler apparel, apparel company in New York. Okay. So now, what do you do? Uh, now I manage a bunch of different uh, stuff from startups to like multi-billion dollar uh, companies. Yeah. So talk about, you know, um, you've seen a lot of crazy things. Um, and one thing that you do is quality control and inspection, right? So yeah. what's some of the quality control nightmares that you've seen? Quality control nightmares, that, like I'll give you a particular example yeah. we did last year. The, per, the One of our clients ordered a small bags, just a small regular bags, uh, and had a big mess, had like 80% of the order were messed up. What, the, what, was, what was wrong with it? It was, uh, what the, the bag was, the stitching wasn't right, Every, the threads were loose everywhere. And uh, you, you, the zipper were like falling off. Wow. Yeah. So then do you get a call before, like, and you're no, on top the, of it, or do you get a call after, like, this was horrible, we need you to go in? The, 
my client called me like uh, their order was ready to ship out. Like they said, we need to have a pre pre shipment inspection done. I see. So they were proactive about it. Yeah. Okay. And then you you go in there and what do you see? I go in there and see a, a big mess and it wasn't the product wasn't ready to sell. And uh, I I told my client, look, you need to tell your supplier re remake everything. Just they lost time in that process, but it saved their money instead of bringing uh, unfinished goods. They had to they told the supplier redo everything again and we'll, we'll reinspect before you ship it. Yeah. Before it's done. So do you handle that? How does it work from there? Do you tell, do you handle with the supplier or do you just basically take pictures of the items or you know, how does it work? Uh, we basically go, uh, one of my uh, inspector goes in and they do a full inspection uh, and based uh, with the standard requirement and we'll test everything. Uh, and for the for the products. So what else have you seen? So you've seen bags that basically were, they said were ready to ship, but they were they horrible quality. Ship. Yeah. What else have you seen? Uh, like a couple of years back, they did a small order for a Malaysian company. They did yoga wear, and uh, that was not, wasn't that bad, but the quality was a little bit decent uh, than last the last story, and. We we are able to fix what we went in because uh, they were in stitching and clothing. You need to check every single uh, material, and we need to do a punch test for the uh, the weight of the fabric and everything like really? that. Really? Yeah. How many? How do you check that? Let's say they order thousands, tens of thousands of pieces. Do you just randomly select ones, or how do you actually do the quality control checks? Oh, uh, we randomly select about. 20, 15 to 25 percent of the order mm -hmm. and uh, and from each box we'll just pick up few few items from that box yeah. yeah and so what are you looking for you said you do a punch test what else do you do you look we at do punch test uh, stitching uh, stitching quality uh, how do you do that do you just pull on it or what, what do you do you pull and you see loose thread everywhere so we will know that it's not stitched properly or mm -hmm. Or clean, clean the stage, uh, threads were not clean, uh, cleaned out properly. Mm -hmm. Anything else that uh, you do to make sure it's? I mean, do they ever do that on their own? The factory? Do they ever? You, if you ask they, them to take pictures and send them to you, or is that not reliable? Uh, I, it's not reliable because sometimes they'll give you a good quality product and other product are not not as good as. Right. They'll just take out the best looking product and right. they'll send it to you. Right, it's biased. And, yeah. And that's why you need a third party inspector to do your inspection. What are some red flags people should be watching out for with factories? Uh, factors right. like uh, make sure you need to check with the factories audited by a third party uh, com company. Mm -hmm. uh, also, make sure they're all certified uh, factories. Make if you're working with a big order, you need to make sure they're in compliance with all, all the regulation mm -hmm. uh, and like that. Any other things on your checklist? Because you're probably, people come to you and say, who should we go with, right? So you, yeah. you have less of these quality control issues if you're helping them find the right factory, yeah. right? So what's on your checklist? Like, okay, yes, they're certified. Yes, they you know, have quality control people. What else is on your checklist as a must when you're looking for your clients for factories? The must is looking for a factory which has uh, how they treat the employees. Mm. How, do you, how do you do that? They, they have this called BCIS compliance, mm -hmm. which, uh, which is, which they do, uh, do any social, uh, have social welfare of the employees. Wow. Yeah. And so, you can, ch is there some, do you check that or do you have to check with the company? Is there like uh, a website? Uh, there, the, the BCIS website, they'll give you all the details uh, if the company is certified by them or some, some third party company. So tell me, how does it work if you go in, right, and a company hires you to do quality control and inspection, you go in and you find it's not good? Are there times where they switch factories completely, or do they usually? Is it typically they go back to the same factory? What happens? Typically, um, they they use the same factory. Just ask the factory to redo the order again, mm -hmm. and uh, 
the world will do the second inspection after the once they redo, redo the product. Mm -hmm. And once, like we have seen, a, a, a unfinished product to a finished product from the same factory with a good quality products. Why is that? Why is it so inconsistent? It's just they have so much. They take orders. They just keep taking orders, and they don't have time to fulfill all the orders at at, at, at the promised time. So they rush to, through the orders. So the quality control inspection is one arm, right? The sourcing yeah. is another arm. So talk about the process when do, do people usually come to you with an idea and they're like, where should we fulfill? At what point in the process do the people come to you as far as the sourcing side? So I have, I have clients coming from, uh, I, I just have an idea in my mind. Can you can you make it happen? Okay, we can do it. We can talk to the, to the clients and sit down and find out what they need, it, what, what, what is required of them. Uh, find out, or bring the idea to a, a concept, then concept to a, a sample product uh, from that. Yeah, so what's the craziest idea you've had to fulfill on, if you can talk about it? The craziest was uh, a, a unique looking uh, a span, spandex uh, jumpsuit. Like the full full on jumpsuit. And do you own one? Can you put it on right now? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one. I don't keep any any of my client samples. You got to get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so from the sourcing side, um, how do you decide whether to go China, India? I mean, there's, a, there's you know, Vietnam I know you source from. How do you decide which one to go with? I ask like based on customers' needs. Uh, I'll ask them like, what is your price point? And depends on their where where right now. Do they do they want particularly from China or do they want somewhere outside of China? So like, most apparel company will right now are going outside of China Why? because the labor, labor cost is high in, in China. Mm. Yeah. So it's less. It's more of an expense thing. So. Um, does it ever vary depending on the type of product? Like if it's apparel versus houseware, uh, where do you direct people um, depending on the type? Like is you know Vietnam better than China for certain things or India better than China for certain things? Uh, I will recommend like any home products through India or China. It will be a primary will be China, then India, then Vietnam, then uh, Malaysia, Indonesia. Uh, such like like for apparel like. African countries are coming up. Really? Yeah. Uh, there are a few African countries where where you can get tax-free products, so you don't have to pay any duty on, on the products when you bring from African countries. Mm. Yeah. So that's for, is that for anything or just more apparel? Uh, it's mostly based on apparel. Apparel. Um, and then what else is better maybe in, are certain products better in Vietnam than China, or is it more just a price thing? Most of a price thing. A price thing. Um, and so talk about how you first, that was the first experience in China, right? You went to that fair, right? Yeah. But now you have a bit, whole business based around China, right? Yes. yes. So how did you form the relationships? Um, because there's a cultural differences too, right? So what yes. are some of the cultural things that you had to navigate working in with China? The biggest, uh, at this point, till day, I have a language barrier. <laughs> That's yeah. The biggest thing. Uh, besides that, they're like, they like, they like to meet people face to face. They don't like to fit, sit behind a computer and talk to you. Mm -hmm. So, meeting a, a supplier face to face will open up, uh, open up uh, many different, uh, the, or bring up any any obstacles you have in front of a computer. Or open up when you talk to them face to face. So. Alhaz, what's from a face-to-face -face standpoint? What's the biggest mistake you made? Face-to-face, um, -face, like you, you, that's normal for Americans, but it's not normal in China. And you had to bite your tongue, or you did something wrong. Uh, it just, oh, with that culture, you need to be like very respectful. Yeah, yeah. Well, you laugh. What did you do? <laughs> I was not supposed to drink. they like they have a certain way to drink tea when when you meet them. And I didn't know like how to bring a tea in front of a, in front of them. So like I just chuck like like an American. <laughs> you just chuck, chuck took a shot. Yeah. So what are you supposed to do? 
uh, you need to let, let, let it, they have like a ceremony they do, like they clean the tea, the first tea, you throw it out, you don't drink it. Okay. The second tea, you just, again, clean it, clean the cups and throw it out. The third time you drink it, this way the brew, the tea is brewed properly. And so you just... Yeah, I just, just, just took, as they have small tea cups, I just like drank the first cup. And so what did they say to you? <laughs> It's like you're not supposed to drink it. Just, just throw it away. So you offended them. Yeah. What else did you do that was offensive? Uh, it's just talking to people uh, because most of them have language barrier. Like right. only one person in the factory will be speaking English with you. The rest of will be speaking Chinese. And you just had to bear in mind, like it's just a language barrier you have. Yeah. yeah. Now you do, people can hire you, you do business tours. So basically, talk about that. You take them to different factories, potential factories when they come over? Uh, the business tour we're doing uh, in April coming up, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, do, we, we take them to uh, two, two trade fair, trade shows, one in Hong Kong, one in, uh, in Guangzhou, which is the biggest one, Canton Fair, mm -hmm. uh, where they have like all suppliers coming over tons of suppliers like hundred thousand suppliers in like four weeks of time like each each phase they have three phases uh each phase has different sub, uh, suppliers coming in uh basically we take them to the show then after the show we'll take them to factory tour and uh during that time we'll network with each other do fun stuff uh, how many people do you take how many people do you want to take on the uh, tour anywhere from five to ten people we take yeah, uh, but we're expecting more people this this time. What was the need? You obviously saw a need. That's why you started doing this. What, what was the need that you saw of business owners? What uh, was the pain they were feeling? The right right now, a lot of I'm a new Amazon sellers are coming up, and most of them don't know how to source. The typical source point here for them is Alibaba. Just put an inquiry on Alibaba, they talk to people. Right. But they don't know anything about the supplier or anything about the product. They request samples from supplier, they send it. But that that's a, like a big, a long process for them. At, at the sourcing trip, where you meet the supplier face to face, get the sample right away, and you can make a deal right away. Yeah, your mic's hitting your clothing for for uh, for some reason. If you just hold it out away from your. The mic on your uh, headset is hitting your clothing. It's creating some feedback wherever the mic is. Yeah, so just hold on to it because um, it's yeah, it's hitting your clothes. But um, so, what type of companies are good to to go on this type of business tour? Do you only handle apparel companies? What? Uh, oh, uh, we handle all, all, all type of country, uh, all type of com uh, companies who can join in, in our trip. Yeah. So, what have you seen? So, besides apparel, what else? Uh, we've seen. Uh, Lots of Amazon sellers came with us last time uh, from they're selling electronic products to house houseware to fitnessware and stuff like that. Got it. And so you can take, you know, five to whatever, 15 of these people on the, the tours. Um, and that's one thing that you do. And how is that just at this particular like once a year or do you offer that in other times? Uh, we did. The Canton Fair is twice a year, and then right. we're gonna have a, a a new trip coming up in June, which is gonna be a, a wholesale market in Evo, which is basically a big wholesale market where you find a, a product, a cheaper product to source from there. Yeah. yeah. So Alz, you know, you talk to a lot of sellers, right? What kind of tools and software do you use, and or do you find other people using to run their e-commerce business? I seen people using ClickFunnels uh, for product launch and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the other one is uh, Jungle Scout for Amazon seller, which is great. Mm -hmm. Gives you all, all the all the data data, anal data you need to analyze for mm -hmm. product research. Mm -hmm. uh, one product, uh, one software you usually it use is RC Sellers. What is that? The they give you. And for Amazon, it's good for Amazon sell. Uh, Amazon, uh, they give you right in when you see a research product on Amazon, it gives you everything in front of you. You don't have to click uh, a 
Chrome uh, extension to get the data, but the data is right in front of you on your page. So it's, is it the letter R, the letter C, sellers, or how do you how do you sell, spell it? Uh, it's uh, Rev Seller, R E R E V S E L L E R. Got it, Rev Sellers. Okay. What else do you find people using, or that you use? Uh, so Jungle Scout, Rev Sellers. What about for the logistical part? I mean, you're dealing with China and shipping, and what do they they do you recommend people use for inventory tracking or other things? Inventory tracking, I use Hello Profit. Uh, I've seen people using Hello Profit for inventory tracking mm -hmm. and uh, similar software to Hello Profit. Hello Profit, okay. Any other similar ones? Like I have uh, Scubana as uh, is is one. Um, Anything else um, that you've seen people use? Uh, uh, for inventory, the other one is ship, st uh, ship station. Mm -hmm. uh, and what else, uh, what other software tools are you seeing people use to manage uh, the, the process? The one, one I just, one of my friends just recommended me this. It's called Profit Phoenix. They just had a contract with Amazon. Hmm. What's it uh, called? Profit what? Profit Phoenix. How do you how do you spell it? Phoenix. P uh, uh, P P. Uh, hold on. Like the city. Like the fin Phoenix, like a bird. Yeah, fin uh, like uh, Phoenix, like the city. Okay, so it's P H O E N I X. Yes. ProfitPhoenix.com. Okay. Yeah. And then what does that do? Uh, they have bunch of tools in there where where they uh, you can do product research uh, they do product analysis uh, a software which also used for Shopify and and uh, and Amazon mm, okay so people could check out profit Phoenix any other good ones that because I feel like you're on the cutting edge of this stuff the sellers are talking to you are telling you what they're using what you know what they like what else uh, this is the software I use myself, and uh, like some of my clients use this as well. You use Profit Phoenix, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. What else do you use? Uh, hold on a second. <laughs> you put me off off topic on this one. Everything's off topic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Camel, camel, camel for Amazon tracking. Camel, camel, camel. That's the actual yeah. domain. Yeah, and there's cap, capa, capa something. Do you use camel, camel, camel? I use ca camel, 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 and and capa. Capa? How do you spell that? K e k e e p k e e p a. Okay. You wouldn't. You didn't know you were gonna get a spelling quiz. On this <laughs> I know. <laughs> um. No, just so they will they can link them in the in the notes. So like profitphoenix.com, camel, 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 and uh, k-e-e-p-a.com. People can check out camel, camel, camel. That's an interesting name. Um, <laughs> any others that you use that we should mention? Uh, hold on. Or Google Chrome extensions? Yeah, most of them have Google Chrome extensions. Okay. Yeah. Uh, DC Amazon Quick uh, View. DC that's a, Amazon Quick View. Yeah, that's a that's a, a Chrome extension. Okay. Um, any email, uh, email or feedback that you use or you like for e-commerce sellers? Uh, email I use um, Mailchimp. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Aweber. Mm-hmm. Um, anything else you find that Amazon sellers use specifically? The most startup they start, they use a, a Jungle Scout. Jungle which Scout. Is, which is the uh, one-time extension yeah. that they have, just yeah. have to purchase. So Alhaz, what um, ideas can you give away? today that you don't use that maybe your customers aren't in because you've been to all these i feel like i would have add overload if i went to these <laughs> fairs right 
There's yeah. so many products. You're like, this is cool. I could do this. This is cool. I could do this. What are some of those things that you've seen that you can talk about that you thought were really cool? And, and you, your customers are doing them. So you, you, you know, feel free to share what ideas, you know, just put it out there. Uh, well, when you, they go to share, uh, trade fair, like, yeah, you see a bunch of suppliers, but you, get, you, you can't find the right supplier product for yourself. They have some new technology out, which is not out. They're just coming out with the concept product, mm -hmm. which you can go and find out. Like, yeah, like what? What did you say? Uh, last uh, last April, I saw this uh, a, a gaming device, mm -hmm. which oh, it's for for kids. Uh, they use like a small toy car, and uh, you can put on iPad or iPhone, and they play, you can play the game or. And, Pretend that you're playing the game as as a first person. So that's not out yet, though. Like that was a new technology. I think they have already have out oh, some, something out uh, last year. What else that you saw that is not new technology that you just thought was, wow? I mean, you weren't there looking for it. Maybe you know, maybe you're looking for whatever yoga pants or something, and you saw this other electronics or other products. What are some other things you've seen that you're not, you or your clients aren't selling, but you thought would be good for someone to do? Uh, like for electronics, I see, I, I, I was just browsing through and I stopped by this boot and I saw this person from a Korean, it was a Korean supplier. Uh, they're selling like uh, Apple skin, uh, skin for the back, back uh, app, uh, skin for, for your phones and iPad. Mm -hmm. And it was very cool that they just have to press once, and it doesn't come. It can take off. It can peel it off, and it doesn't. It's like reusable. Leave. Yeah, it can be reusable. Yeah. It doesn't leave any residue on on the phone. That's cool. Yeah. What else? What else have you seen that? Like there was a uh, a mug where you just put it on there. It, it doesn't move. It, it, you just have to lift up lift the mug. And it will, it will come off. If you try to shake it, it, does, it doesn't fall off. Oh, it almost table. like sticks to the counter so it doesn't spill yeah. or you can't knock it. Yeah, you can, you, you, when you try to punch it, it won't fall off. You just have to lift. To, it'll, hmm. it'll, it'll, what it'll technology? Be. Isn't that like a suction or something? Or what? I'm what? not sure what, what, what they were using. <laughs> That's really interesting. Yeah. Um, do you find that when you go to these fairs, like do you currently sell... Um, or do you just are just helping strictly helping customers? Like, do you have your own line of things? I minimal. I sell minimal products online. I, yeah. Most of the time, I sell provide service. You're sourcing. Okay. Um, yeah. This is very interesting to hear and see. Um, at what point would you think someone is a good fit to go to one of the shows? Like, at what point in their in their business? But if you're in business within one year, you, you definitely have to go there. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're studying out, I'll recommend you can go, but just take your time to learn the process. Yeah. So what are the categories? You said it's broken up into three separate portions. Yes. The first portion is mostly um, uh, electronics and uh, other, uh, mach machineries for fa uh, factories. Uh, and second part is consumer goods. Mm -hmm. All types like from kitchenware, houseware, uh, a bit, a baby products, and some baby pet products, uh, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That the last part is apparel, uh, travel uh, goods, um, fabrics, and stuff like that. Yeah, and office. Supplies. Yeah, um, Oz. You know what's interesting is. How did you get into this in the first place? Because I was looking in the research, I saw you were a pharmacy technician for like yeah. five or six years. So yeah. how did you go from pharmacy technician into sourcing from China? Uh, it was like uh, I went for a trip to Europe. Uh, after coming back from Europe, like I need to source some kind of uh, jerseys, soccer jerseys from, China, from somewhere. Why? And, Just because you liked them? Yeah, I just like them. I was trying to create a brand myself, but it didn't work out. Uh, then that's that's how the process started for me. So you were trying to you like these soccer jerseys. You're like, I should bring these, sell them, and so you went to figure out where you should source them from. Yeah. And so, 
what happened from there? You said it didn't work out. I was, it just wasn't enough. I didn't have enough capital to start uh, the whole process because uh, it requires a lot of work. Yeah. And uh, the, the new new design is, was, was, was the new cutting edge right at that time. Yeah. Well, I'm just curious because what was the challenge for you? Because other people are going to experience that challenge. Um, they're experiencing it now or they will. What was the challenge in that particular business? Uh, in that particular business, I, I, I didn't have enough knowledge of it because yeah. I was just, I, was, I just saw a product in, in Europe. And I came back and was just researching it. I couldn't. I found a few products, but like then I need to find a designer to design the product for you, and then make a sample, then send a sample to the factory to make the replica of that sample. Right. So now you figured out the process. Yes. And that's what you help people with. Yes. Right. So you were sort of creating the service that you wish you had when you fumbled when around started. when you started. When I started, yes. So is it that the client work keeps you too busy? Do you have an itch to, to actually do your own line now that you have this process down for other people? Or are you just like helping other people with it? I just love, like helping other people. If I, yes, I want to start my own product I want someday. Well, like at the time, right, I'm just busy with clients, uh, working with clients. Yeah. And um, I'm interested that you have certain packages on your site. Right, yes. and those packages are those more for the, uh, the tours. Are those more for like you the have a five ninety nine package, which is one product up to two qualified suppliers. Is that just for the tours, or what is that? What are those packages for? The package is for uh, Amazon sellers, yep. uh, uh, where they can choose one product. Uh, how many that depends on how many products they want to source at the time, and which sell goes from. Give you they give them the full uh, package, uh, they can select one package, a two product package or three product package or five product. Right. Package. So let's say someone basically they're like, okay, I want to create this cutting edge spatula, whatever yeah. it is, and so they would get that one package, and you would help them find the best sourcer. What we what steps do you help them with to get that idea to final product? First, we'll uh, take the idea and find a, find an initial supplier to make a sample out for them. Mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, once the sample is made, we'll look for different uh, supplier uh, to make sure of the pricing we get. Give them is uh, competitive for them purchase that product. Mm -hmm. And then what else? Then we uh, do uh, negotiate the pricing on their behalf, and after after. Uh, purchase order is placed. We'll go through the whole step of the order, and until the uh, uh, it goes through the logistic process. Do you tell people ever tell people this is a horrible idea? You should not do it. Some people I do. So what's been an idea that you've told them? This is I mean that they didn't end up pursuing. What's been a bad idea? I was just they're trying to replicate some cheap product and like. You're gonna fail on this project, so it's, you're just gonna waste your time. Do they listen to you? Bobby? Do they listen to you? Yeah, sometimes they listen. Yeah. Yeah. So replicating, what else has been a bad idea? Bad idea products, uh, tons. Yeah. I don't know where to start. <laughs> um, you know, where someone came to you and they they actually listened. That you said this is bad. Yeah. So I have this current. Um, Couple of clients I'm working currently. I told they asked me, okay, can you find see? Can you do uh, look at this product and see if it's good for us or not? And then I'll look at it, uh, see if it's workable for them. And if it's not workable, I'll just tell them straight away. Look, you're gonna waste your time in this, and you're gonna lose money. Yeah. What do you look at to figure out if that is you say yes or no? I I look at the. Uh, like the quality of the product and uh, the, the, and the pricing. The pricing is, is, is the most important part for any, anything. Uh, if the pricing is not workable, like the material they use for the product is sometimes expensive. Mm -hmm. and, and if they want to do that product, they have to put for a startup product is going to put a lot of money for them. So yeah. I just like, look, you can hold on to this idea till you have enough capital. Yeah. 
Oh, this has been great. I love hearing these ideas and these the softwares and um, so people should check out. We should send them to um, you know AmericanStarGroup.com. Yes. Um, anywhere else they should check out, or is that the best uh, place? We're rebranding again. It's gonna be AMZImport.com. Okay. AMZImport.com. So yes. people, it's better for them to go to AMZImport.com. Okay. Anywhere. Up and running by February. Yeah. So what should we we uh, leave people with? What's a lesson or something else that'd be important to to end on? Oh, we can live with lesson. Just go with your heart and just follow your dreams. What's yours? My, <laughs> I'm still figuring out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with this company, where do you see it? Um, what's the future as far as the trends and where do you see it going? Uh, we're trying to rebrand the, like I said, uh, to a new new uh, new brand. So thinking we are going uh, probably in a few years we'll, we'll hit up the Vegas uh, shows soon. So. Why the rebrand? Uh, because uh, some of my clients said like, look, we, it's the service you're providing to Amazon seller is not going to through to them. So you need to come up with with the brand brand uh, brand that goes. Yeah. Amazon yeah, I like talking about this because we're always thinking, you know, as entrepreneurs, how do we best message to our customers um, so that they know that we're the right fit, right? Yes. And it sounds like you were getting feedback saying like when they hit your initial site, they weren't knowing this is for them. Yes. And so AMZ import is more, they're like, okay, if I'm an Amazon seller, this is, this, this is, is who serves me. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's good. What else have your customers told you that you listened to that was good feedback for you and how you changed your process or did things differently? Uh, I listened to them like in, in the last sourcing trip. We had some little hiccups. So I listened to them and now, now we're tweaking the pricing uh, for that. Mm. Gotcha. Okay, so people should check out amzimport.com. Alhaz, I appreciate you. Thank you for your time and uh, look forward to seeing you in person. Likewise, right. Raj, I look to see you at Prosperous in yeah. Vegas. All right. Thanks, Alhaz. Right. Take care. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.